All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jose Aranda, and we are the Doña Ana Community College. We are going to be presenting to resources for popular culture. And it is a broad topic. One could talk about popular culture for hours, right? We are going to be highlighting what we think are essential resources. Before we get started, in case this is your first time joining us, we just ask you'd mute your microphone until uh, we ask for your input or questions. Know that this is being recorded. So if you wish to view it later, you will be able to do that and or share it with uh, your friends. I have my colleagues helping me out. So uh, someone will be manning the chat box if you have a question and you want to use the chat box. Otherwise, I will pause throughout the presentation and especially at the end to entertain questions. If you've uh, been familiar with our presentations, most of what we've been presenting are resources that are found from the library's homepage. And this is another picture of the homepage. And keep in mind, it's constantly updated. There are new things being added, news items and other things, but also rearrangement of the website. We're, we're aiming for improvement all the time. So keep a bookmark please, of this website. You should see there our URL on the top left-hand corner. If you're not familiar with it, everything we talk about comes from, is linked somehow, or comes from this homepage. I will talk to you today about a couple of databases. We'll begin there, and then we'll go on to some other things. I have given presentations on our databases several times now. You could visit our homepage and look at our previously recorded presentations, uh, more specifically, that have all that information in more detail than what I'm going to be presenting today. But just to refresh your memory, this is a picture within our homepage where to click on to access the list of our databases. And again, that list is updated frequently. We are adding and we're taking away and we're improving that list continuously. Just remember the link to the list stays the same, but what's on the list may change from time to time. The first couple of resources that I'm going to show you are actual databases. Both of these databases I'm going to talk to you about, we subscribe internally for our community at DACC, but also the state of New Mexico provides access to them. So you can access these databases either way. As a resident of New Mexico, you have privileges to these two databases through uh, the State Library's website. And again, I've given presentations on what that is. It's called El Portal. Also, uh, our library subscribes specifically to these databases, so we have access to them too. So when you click on this list, and it's arranged alphabetically, you will see here, for example, where the arrow is pointing, it says Popular Culture Studies for all New Mexican residents. And up right above it, it just says Popular Culture Studies. That's what I mean. So the first one is for the DACC community. And the next one, the one that says for all New Mexico residents is exactly that. It's for everyone in the state. It's the same resource. It's just uh, how you get there that differentiates. And we list both of them here on this list. So uh, I will be talking to you about this database, Popular Culture Studies, and then one below it. I'm going to talk about popular magazines first. Gale is a big vendor of ours, along with Edsco. We, we love their products. They have many resources that we love to access and promote to our users and community. Presented on a number of them. And yet another one is this one, Popular Magazines. And that's exactly what this is. It is a database, a portal for you to access magazines. If you've never been to our campus, libraries, and of course, for the last 16 months, no one has, you can access all the magazines, all your favorite magazines that you were used to accessing that were freely available for you to peruse on the wall and on, on the shelves through here. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these databases because they're pretty self-explanatory. Again, I've already given several presentations on how to use our databases. If you need help with that, just send us an email or give us a call and we'll be glad to help you individually. But I thought, you know, to save time, I, I wasn't going to repeat myself uh, too much on the how-tos. I just wanted to highlight some of the features of these databases. If you're familiar with Gale, all the databases pretty much operate the same. In fact, most databases do as well. But the ones within the same vendor, so the EBSCO ones, the Gale ones, 
they're going to definitely be looking exactly alike and they operate exactly alike. Once you are familiar with one, it's a lot easier to access and familiarize your, yourself with the rest of them that belong to that vendor. Popular magazines. So here's just an example. Magazines that are listed in this database. And so this is just a snippet of some of the favorite ones that I had. Okay, so I'm a little biased here, but you'd be surprised of how many magazines are indexed through this database. Check it out. These are some of my favorite. I'm sure my colleagues would have picked different ones, but just know that this is the place to go if you want to peruse any of these electronically. Just some features within this database uh, that I like and I'd like to highlight is the searching of the publication, right, is going to do exactly that. So if you are looking specifically for a magazine or a publication, you can go here and type in the title to see if it's there. Uh, that'll tell you. Otherwise, you can do the subject guide, and I've talked about that previously on how to do that. Uh, but I think this is important, especially with the filters or the limiters that are underneath that, the full text and the dates, and the countries. So you can play around with that to come up with a search result that uh, satisfies you. The other picture that I have on the right-hand side that I like is that you can search for document type. Now, I was unable to take a picture of the entire list they have here. So this was the best I could do, but they have many document types. So if you're an instructor and you're thinking about using this for your classes, you could narrow the requirements for whatever assignment, and we can help you with that, creating the assignment if you don't already have it, with what type of documents you'd be interested in having your students uh, access. So I thought this was a neat feature that we kind of may not think about when we're thinking about magazines. We have this popular or preconceived notion of what a magazine looks like or how the format that it should come in. But I like that this database allows with the flexibility and the options of narrowing down the, the document types. So for example, here you have critical essays, you have culture maps. I think I tried narrowing this example since I was limited in, the, in taking the picture to, to popular culture dance reviews, definition. I thought that was neat to, to highlight for this uh, database. Very similar, it's exactly like, this is Pop Culture Studies database. And again, another Gale product. I'm not gonna add anything more to it, ex except the unique features that I like about this database. Everything else applies. It's a Gale product. Again, here's a quick example. So what you couldn't find in the other one, may you may be able to find in this one. Okay, so here's some of my favorites, right? I, I'm a big fan of National Geographic and of Men's Health, uh, Time, and Bon Appetit. So New Yorker is an excellent magazine. These are great titles. So another excellent source. And they're electronic. When I was growing up, when I was a kid, you had to physically go to the library and get your hands on these magazines and make photocopy. Now it's all electronic. So the accessibility is just so much improved. The library is here to help you if you are an instructor to brainstorming and come up with assignments so you can focus more on what you want your students to do, not so much teaching them on how to access it. So I've talked about these features before. The topic finder is just a graphical way uh, this database presents your search results. And the graphic comes in two formats. It comes in this tiles visualization, which is on the left, and you can choose the wheel visualization, which is on the right. Depending on what your objective is, may help you decide which one to use. These are just two examples of searching this database using keywords or just typing in words to see what comes up. So the first one on the left, I, I typed in gender roles. So the tiles are giving you uh, tiles of the subcategories or the subtopics it found within the database. You would then click on them and be then sent to a search results page. And of course, the bigger the tile, the more results it has within them. This could be used to brainstorm, especially when students have to come up with their own ideas or topics. I like showing them this because it kind of helps. I think the graphic helps a lot, period, but it also could stimulate brainstorming. The one on the right does exactly the same thing. It's just it's in the wheel. And this is an example that I typed in using civil disobedience. So again, a graphic there representing what they have within this database. It's colorful, so it kind of helps distinguish. I think both are neat. Now these are eBooks. I have given presentations on eBooks. They work very similarly to how databases work. It's just 
some intricacies that are more germane to the eBooks. Again, we will be glad to help you if you need that, but keep them in mind, especially with online learning. Our collection is growing every week, every month uh, on our eBook collection. Here's one source called the eBook Academic Collection, and it's from EBSCO. If you want to check out the presentation we did last year, the recording is available. I cover more of the how to how you download and all that other stuff. I just wanted to make sure and include this in this presentation because we definitely have eBooks on the topic of popular culture. Here's just an example. I don't wanna go in too further into the details because I've already covered these in the other presentations. You type in your keywords, you come up with a search results list. In this case, popular culture brought us back with 4,400 results. That's a lot. They're full text, so all the limiters, all the filters you could use to narrow that uh, number down is essential, and we teach that, and we'll be glad to help you if you want that. This database also includes videos, so that could be something useful. On the right-hand side, I just added this uh, picture of the subjects. This could be helpful for students that are brainstorming or looking for topics and they're unsure, or even if you do have a topic, always looking at the subject categories or the assigned subject topics uh, can help one further their topic or emphasize or focus on something they may not have thought about. And not only that, but it tells you how many results the database has on that specific subtopic. I think that's useful. And then in the bottom category, just like the other database that I was talking about, formatting, this too can give you categories, areas that we search using popular culture. So you want criticism, it's there. You want media studies. You want to focus on the sciences of sociology, cultural. It's all there to help you further down. Uh, I think it's an excellent tool to use. So another ebook resource we have, it looks exactly the same, right? But it's called ebook collect. Again, it's owned by the same company. If you get confused, don't worry, we'll help you out. I just wanted to highlight that we have this other resource of ebooks. In this example, I typed in pop culture influence on society, you know, a little bit more specific topic. Uh, the more words you use, the more narrow the topic. And then the results here are 450 as opposed to 4,000. And then I like this book that came up, Japan Pop. I know it's K-pop that's popular, but I think the Japanese started being very popular. If you look at the date of that book, that goes back 21 years. Again, I've given presentations and you can check out our recordings on all the intricacies of how to use it. There's full text linkage from eBooks here that can really help uh, anyone uh, searching for popular culture. This picture here is an example of what this Japan pop book looks like. When you click on the title there, you get this, what we call bibliographic page. It just has all the information that's relevant. Who wrote it, when, how old it was, what's it about, what are the related subjects, how to access the full text and, and how to save it, print it, or email it to yourself, among other things. So a lot of things to click on. If you need help with this, we'll be glad to help. Okay, we're almost to the end. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I, we just wanted to highlight some popular museums about popular culture. Uh, I think the Seattle one, the first one, the Museum of Popular Culture, and the Austin one, the one underneath it, are two, if not the most, one of the most popular museums in our country. I'm sure other countries have other ones uh, that deal with popular culture. There are their URLs that you could click on and check their websites out. Again, I could have spent much more time just on each one of these. Uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I've never been there, but we can at least look at their website, see what they have to offer. And then of course, country music. And then you got the other ones there, the Museum of Broadcast Communications, which is uh, I think what's been on TV, getting a little bit more uh, comical are the memes database and video games, uh, fun hobbies to have all part of popular culture. Uh, I don't claim to be a specialist. I'm not a cultural anthropologist and they may have more academic resources. I'm sure they do, uh, but we just felt that we'd give you a little taste of what some of these museums and other sites uh, can provide if you were interested in popular culture. This is uh, information about the Southwest Popular slash American Culture Association and Conference. 
The reason why I know about this, and many of us at DACC probably can recall, is that our colleague, English professor Kurt Deppner, has been affiliated with this association for quite a while. I don't know, eight, 10 years, it may be longer. I don't know. But he's he's been pushing them for a long time. They have an annual conference up in Albuquerque. When I spoke to him about this presentation, he said his his take was more academic in terms of teaching, but I'm sure there is a lot more that they talk about. I provided what they have on their website, which is their mission. You can read that. I think it's on the topic. I think it's very appropriate. There's our website up there, southwestpca.org. And then a picture that I took of their website yesterday underneath it. I'm sure they have way more information. And they obviously met earlier this year virtually. Hopefully, they'll be meeting in person next year. Follow this website or get in touch with Kurt Bettner, our English professor at DACC, for more information. I've spoken about a couple of databases, popular magazines, and then popular cultures. I've spoken about a couple of ebooks that are from EBSCO, a list of websites for museums, and then the uh, Southwest Popular Culture Association. We like to keep these presentations brief, trying to introduce to you some resources we think are key in the subject area, and then we expect you to get a hold of us for further instruction or more one-on-one uh, -on -one attention. I invite you, in two weeks, I will be presenting something very similar about the resources of New Mexico. A little bit of history, a little bit of culture. If you're interested, uh, send us an email to library at dacc.nmsu.edu. Again, this will be on the 28th, which is in two weeks at 10 a.m. Gracias. Our contact information is up there on the upper right hand corner. Copy at least the survey link there at the bottom. You don't have to do it right away, but if you can get to it later, maybe this week when you have time. Well, thank you everyone. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I hope you've learned something. If you need anything, if you weren't sure, if you have questions, you need help, once you do get in there, don't hesitate to contact any of us. We are all here to help. Share this with whoever you think would like it. These are all recorded and listed on our homepage. Refer anyone you want to check us out. And hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Have a good rest of the day, everybody.